said that Spider-Man can do anything a spider can. However, in the excitement leading up to Spider-Man No Way Home, I'm going to be sharing my five reasons why I think Peter Parker's Spider-Man is more in fact like a spider monkey. So you ready? Join the safari and let's get started. Spider-Man is more like a spider monkey. I know in the comics, obviously, Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive spider and he can shoot webs, whether by a web blood or <laughs> other mechanisms. But alas, like how in the comics, there's a variety of different people who take up the mantle of Spider-Man and hopefully, as we'll see in Spider-Man No Way Home, a variety of different Peter Parkers there are seven different species of spider monkey, and actually seven subspecies within that. However, all of them are found in the Americas, which we refer to as New World monkeys. Now, the first reason why I think Spider-Man might be more like a spider monkey actually has to do with the iron spider suit and an adaptation that spider monkeys have that really make them stand out. Both in the MCU and in the comics, Tony Stark created this suit. And no, it wasn't in a cave with a box of scraps, but rather one really intuitive suit. We see in the movies that it responds to Peter's mental input, which makes it really nifty when you're fighting aliens in space. It's composed of four spider legs that combined with Peter's two arms and two legs gives a nice arachnid impression. It's bulletproof, has a parachute. Long story short, it is one cool suit. Can you hear that? Both Peter and Tammy are in the studio with me <laughs> cleaning, being exceptionally loud. Boys, come on, I'm trying to film here. Ay, ay, ay. And it's the iron spider's legs, if you will, that reminded me of the spider monkey's tail. This tail is prehensile and definitely sets spider monkeys apart. When I say it's really long, their tail is actually longer than their own body. And they use this tail to grab onto branches, so then that way their hands are free to grab onto fruit. Which reminds me of the use of Peter Parker using the iron spider's legs to help support him while he's busy doing other things. Another adaptation that really stands out with spider monkeys is their thumbs. Well, not really, I guess, kind of stands out because they don't actually have opposable thumbs on their hands. So I guess they wouldn't make good hitchhikers. Instead, they have vestigial thumbs. Therefore, their hands look more hook-like than anything, which turns out to be a bit more helpful when you're swinging from branch to branch. Now, the second thing that makes me think that Spider-Man might be more like a spider monkey than an actual spider revolves around their social network. We see in the MCU, particularly what looks to be in the trailer footage for No Way Home, is that Peter is surrounded by a core group of four people. We got Aunt May, Happy Hogan, MJ, and of course the man in the chair, Ned. And it looks like he might be needing their help in Spider-Man No Way Home to round up some particularly interesting individuals. However, with this one, it was Aunt May that truly made me think of spider monkeys as spider monkey troops are typically matriarchal, with the alpha female of the troop usually making the decisions as where to go for food and who stays in the group, thus bringing back images from Spider-Man Homecoming, where she decided where to go to eat. Now, it depends on the species, but spider monkeys are typically very social, and in fact, they have groups as large as 100 individuals, which, as you might think, could be rather complicated when it comes to sourcing food. Therefore, their group dynamic is known as fission fusion, which is a fancy word for just divide and conquer. So for example, let's say that food was scarce. They would divide into smaller kind of subgroups to go find food. And then when food became rather abundant, they would all come back together. It'll be particularly interesting to see how the Spidey social network plays into Spider-Man No Way Home. So the third reason why I think Spider-Man might be more like a spider monkey is in fact due to the swinging capabilities of both. In the MCU and the comics, we see Peter do some fantastic swinging from skyscrapers, on alien spaceships, in 
battles for planet Earth against Thanos. He's got some serious skills. But what about spider monkeys? Hmm, obviously they don't have web shooters, but they have something maybe more impressive, depends who you ask. We've already talked a bit about their tail, which by the way, doesn't actually have fur on the underside of it. Therefore it's a bit better at gripping onto things. I mentioned earlier their hook-like hands, which aid in swinging around on the branches, but they also have mobile shoulder joints, which again, really help them move around the trees. And got me thinking, actually, I wonder if that was part of Peter's powers is having more flexible shoulder joints to be able to assist in him doing those crazy aerial acrobatics, just like one might say spider monkeys do. Or should I say, night monkey. And it's with these adaptations that some species of spider monkey can clear as much as 30 feet with a single swing. Ooh, that is so cool. So the fourth reason why I think Spider-Man is more like a spider monkey than an actual spider comes down to the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man sentence, quality, attribute. Now I'm not saying spiders aren't friendly. I love spiders. In fact, you can check out after this video, my video on spiders, which I'll pop down in the link below. They're pretty friendly. And they too play a vital role in the ecosystems and habitats in which they live. However, the spider monkeys, well, they do something rather unique with their poo. So they poo below where they sleep. And scientists have found a direct correlation between the abundance of food on the forest floor and the sleeping patterns of spider monkeys. As they eat mostly fruit, actually about 80% of their diet is fruit, they act as quite nice seed dispersers via their poo that help not only the ecosystem flourish in terms of fertilizing more food for potential spider monkeys in the future, but then more immediately, they help out other animals in the area like dung beetles. Actually, while we're talking about them eating fruit, I should mention how spider monkeys can see in color, which helps them then in turn detect the ripest fruit. Although they can't actually detect the color blue, which is interesting. Hmm. But anyways, back to Spider-Man. So obviously Spider-Man is known as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And there's such great examples from both the MCU and the comics that lent itself into really endearing Spider-Man and Peter Parker into my heart as one of my favorite superheroes, if not my favorite superhero, let's be honest. Some things that stand out to me is that he's always looking out for the little guy. He gives directions, he looks after people's property, he chooses saving people's lives over getting the bad guy. And actually, it was in Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man comic number six, where he helps a child who is suffering from a terminal illness feel like Spider-Man. He's not afraid to take time out of his, you know, busy schedule of being a superhero to help people out. But I think the biggest thing is that he goes through a lot of things and sacrifices a lot of his own personal happiness to help others. And even though Peter uh, can get the short end of the stick quite often, that doesn't deter his attitude. Although it does deter my Peter's attitude from interrupting me when I'm filming. Hello? You. Now the last thing that makes me think Spider-Man is more like a spider monkey than an actual spider comes in the form of the threats facing both of them. In Spider-Man No Way Home, we see Spider-Man is going to have a lot on his plate, potentially from the multiverse, with some incredible villains making a comeback. And I'm so excited and I'm so here for it. I don't know about you, but I got goosebumps when I heard William Defoe's voice in the trailer. But on a serious note, this isn't looking really good for Peter and for his friends or for the Statue of Liberty <laughs> particular trailer. And sadly, all seven species of spider monkey are at risk of extinction. For example, the brown spider monkey, which is found in Colombia and Venezuela, is listed on the IUCN red list as being critically endangered. So they are not only losing their habitat, but also being hunted illegally. The IUCN Red List suggests that they will suffer a population decline of 80% over the next 45 years based on recent data. That is devastating. We've seen how incredible these animals are, but have real life superpowers. 
from helping out the neighborhood via their poo to going more than 30 feet with a single swing or their rather impressive prehensile tail. These animals are incredible and we need to step up to be superheroes in our own right to save these animals from extinction. As Uncle Ben says, with great power comes great responsibility and we have the power. Oh, now you show up at the end. I set that up for him in the beginning so he could sit in the back while I talk. You little wonderful spider cat. Or <laughs> you. For more information, be sure to check the links in the description below to find out how you can help make a difference for these incredible animal superheroes. Now over the course of the past week leading up to this video, you guys have asked me a few questions regarding Spider-Man because you know he's my favorite superhero. And so I'll answer a few of them now. Firstly, who's my favorite Peter Parker? Well, apart from my own Peter Parker, who conveniently has decided to finally join us at the end of filming, <laughs> my favorite has to probably be, if I had to choose one, Tom Holland. I really enjoy the, uh, I don't wanna say childishness, but the playfulness that he has and that he brings and the nerdiness to it. Although I really love Toby because it's the nostalgic of, oh my gosh, it's Peter Parker on the big screen and being excited about that. And Andrew Garfield's passion, and I'm just a fan of his work in general. So when he got to play Peter Parker, I was like, yay. But yeah, if I had to pick, it would be Tom Holland. However, in Spider-Man No Way Home, I will probably cry slash scream if I see all three on the screen together. Now following that was what's my favorite Spider-Man movie? And I gotta say it was probably Into the Spider-Verse. The animation, the creativity, the voice acting, it was just stunning. I loved it. The next one was what is my favorite Spider-Man suit? Now that's really tough to choose because you got the video games to think of, the comics, the movies, and all that stuff. I have to say though, probably Iron Spider because it was so cool to see it in the MCU and to see it kind of come to life, really. And obviously it got me thinking of like the spider monkey and things like that, but I just loved that idea of the mental kind of input, the intuitivity, intuitivity of the suit. Like, how rad is that? That is so cool. And so with that, friends, are you looking forward to Spider-Man No Way Home? Goes without a doubt, I am. In fact, uh, by the time you watch this video, I'll have already bought my tickets. I'm so excited. Uh, well, give this video a thumbs up, a nice spidery thumbs up if you enjoyed learning more about spider monkeys and how they might actually be more like Spider-Man than spiders. And after you do, be sure to check out my other video on what real life animal is like the Flash which you can check out right here because it stars my favorite DC hero and my favorite animal of all time, the cheetah. So go on, click it. I'll see you over there. Thanks so much for watching.